Hello, guys. My name is TJ Hughes. I am a pastoral intern here at Metro Praise International Church, and I am so excited to be able to share the word of God with all of you today, to be able to encourage you guys, to help you guys, and to uh, build you guys up in God's kingdom. So I uh, let's pray, and we're going to go right into the message for today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for everything you have done and everything you're going to do. God, I pray that every single person who's hearing my voice will live for you, that they'll go after you, that they will seek your face and seek your glory, God. Lord, I pray that you will have your way in their hearts, have your way in their lives, Lord. I pray that you lead them and God them pour off your spirit upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I want to talk about making an impact for God's kingdom. I believe that every single Christian, every single believer, every single one of you who are hearing my voice are called to make an impact for God's kingdom. That you're called to do amazing things for God and to see God move upon the nation and upon your life. That God wants to use every single one of you to see people who are broken, people who are lost, people who are depressed, saddened, all to come to know the blood of Jesus Christ. But my friends, we are living in times where many Christians are not living like that, where many Christians are not living to the commandments of God, where many Christians are not making an impact for God's kingdom. And the reason why they're not making an impact for God's kingdom, my friends, the reason why they're not making an impact for the kingdom of God, for one reason, is because of holiness. Many Christians are not living holy. Many Christians are not living pure and not living according to the word of God. The Bible says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So God makes it very clear. That if you love God, you will obey his commandments. If you love God, you're going to live for him. If you love God, you're going to follow him and follow his words. And so many Christians are not able to make an impact for the kingdom of God because they're not living holy. They're not living pure. They're not living righteous. See, the Bible talks about holiness is to mean to be set apart. Holiness doesn't mean that you're looking like and you're talking like and you're uh, acting like the world. But no, friends, it's the opposite. You're living like, you're talking like, you're walking like Jesus. See, that's the, that's the opposite, my friends. And so many Christians has lost the, the heart of God. Many Christians have lost the understanding that we're called to live holy, that we're called to live pure. They were called to go all out for Jesus. They were not supposed to just live the bare minimum of Christianity. They were not just supposed to go to church on Sunday, but friends were called to win souls for God's kingdom. We're called to win souls for the kingdom of God. But how can you win souls for God's kingdom if you're not living holy? How can you make an impact for God's kingdom if you're not living pure? How can you make an impact for God's kingdom if you're not living righteous? This is what some this is what what's wrong with some of the churches nowadays because we have pastors and leaders and people who claim to be Christians, claim to be followers of God, claim to be who know about God and his commandments and who are not living like it. People are tired of seeing hypocrites in the church, my friends. People are tired of seeing hypocrites all walking around them, people who claim to be Christian, who live one way on Sunday but smoke weed on Tuesday. See, friends, we are called to be like Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 through 16, it says, Be just as he who called you is holy. So be holy in all you do, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. Jesus makes it very clear. Peter makes it very clear that we're called to be holy just as our heavenly father in heaven is holy. Just like Jesus is holy, we're supposed to be holy. We're supposed to be set apart for such a time as this. We're supposed to be righteous. See, friends, you people cannot look at your life if your life is messed up. 
If your life is messed up and you claim to be a Christian, you claim to be a follower, a believer, a follower of Jesus, you claim to be a Bible caller student, but you're not living according to God's word and his commandments, friends, you are doing, you're being, you're doing something wrong. You're not living according to God's word and his commandments. People cannot look up to you. You cannot be a good leader if you're not living according to God's word and his commandments. If you're not living holy, if you're not living pure, if you're not living righteous, if you're not living for God and his word. God makes it very clear that this is what how we're supposed to live, that we're supposed to be like Jesus. Right, Christians, the word Christian means little Christ. We're supposed to look like him. We're supposed to walk like him. We're supposed to talk like him and be more like him. But if you're looking at certain things that you're not supposed to be looking at, if you're talking like you're not supposed to be talking Christian, then you're not being like Christian. You're being more like the world. The Bible makes it very clear. It says, do not love the world because everything of the world is wrong, it's bad. All these different things in the world are wrong. It doesn't bring freedom. It doesn't bring um, purity. It doesn't bring righteousness. It just brings destruction. And so you're called to live holy. The Bible, this is what the Bible says. In Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse 27 to 28, it says, whatever happens, conduct, ooh, let me say one one more time. Whatever happened, conduct yourself in a manner that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whenever I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you this is a, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed but that you will be saved and got that and that and that by god see god makes us makes us, makes it very clear god wants us to live our life in a way that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. Paul talks about it, that there is a way that we're supposed to live, that we're supposed to conduct ourselves in a manner that's worthy of the gospel, that's worthy of the gospel, that doesn't just talk about the gospel, but also live like him. Right? There's many people who talk about Jesus, but there are not many people who live like Jesus. There are many people who talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk, my friends. There's many people who are walking and talk and, and, and think they're talking to Jesus, but they're really talking to themselves and not really talking to God, not really having a relationship with God. The Bible says that there will be, there will be many people who say, Lord, Lord, they're not prophesy, they're not speaking tongues, they're not do all these great things for you, God. And God will say to them, depart from me that I never knew you because, because why? Because you didn't have a true relationship with God. It was all talk. He wasn't really walking with Jesus, my friend. So if you want to impact the kingdom of God, you have to live holy. You have to live holy. You have to live holy. You have to live for God and go out, go all out for him and worship him in spirit and in truth and live for him and really seek his face and seek his glory. Another thing I really want to highlight today to be able to make an impact for the kingdom of God, you have to be courageous and have no fear. The reason why I talk about these different about being courageous and have no fear, because a lot of time when we're trying to make an impact for God's kingdom, God tells us to do certain things that could be uh, frightened or we can be afraid to do. 
We can be scared to do these different things for God. God's telling us to go preach to this person who's by themselves. But friend, I don't want to do that because I don't know how to talk about Jesus. I don't want to do that, God, because I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid they're going to make fun of me. I'm afraid that they're going to talk about me. But God is saying, be strong and courageous. God is saying, go and do what I tell you to do. Be obedient to the kingdom of God. Be obedient to what you're called to do. I remember a time where I was in high school and we were, was about to do this Christian club event called The Message of Hope. And we didn't really promote it or promote it at the school at all. And my... Um, my sponsor, who was over the Christian Club event, she didn't want to do the event. So my friend, she didn't want to do the event. The sponsor didn't want to do the event. Um, the vice president, who was my best friend, didn't want to do the Christian Club event. And another person who came on a regular basis who we uh, often ask for help and often you know, put him included to the things that we're you know, doing for the Christian Club event, he didn't want to do it. But I felt in my heart that we should still do it. I'm like, man, God, like God, I believe God's going to do something amazing. I believe God's going to do something awesome that God's going to show up and show off. And so I remember talking to my leader and I talked to uh, my leader during that time. And I asked him, I said, should I do this? Uh, should we still do this event? You know, everybody else don't want to do it. They, they think it's going to fail. It's going to, uh, we're, we're not going to have the people that we want. We're not going to, uh, it's going to have, it's going to be one person there. And he said, no, you still, still do it. If one person comes up to that event and they get saved, then you did your job. And so I said, okay. So I, the next day I went to my, the Christian club sponsor. I went to my friend and I said, bro, we got to do this event. And they said, okay. And I remember that day for the Christian club event, all these people started to come inside. It was like six or seven people. And we had speakers and we had people who gave, gave testimonies. And I remember some of the teachers came and they actually came to the Christian club event. And some of the staff members, some of the security guards came. And I was so blessed to see them. But I remember this one teacher who I told I told her about the Christian club event, and she said she couldn't come because she had a, a night school class. Well, matter of fact, she she still had that night school class, but she actually brought all her students to this Christian club event to hear the gospel. And people went up for prayer. People got saved. People gave their life to Jesus. It was a impactful event. It was so encouraging. And one of one of the brothers who came to the Christian Club event is still serving God today by God's grace, by God's mercy. But see, my friends, if I wasn't standing firm on God's word and I wasn't being courageous and I didn't and I uh, allowed the fear of what uh, all those people were telling me, if I allowed that to uh, if I allowed that to. Uh, if I allowed that to motivate me in my decision, then we would have never saw somebody uh, come to know Jesus that day. We would have never saw that many people get prayer and you know see God move in their lives, see God move in their hearts. We have we, we would have never saw these different things happen. But because I said yes in that moment, God moved, and I was able to make an impact for God's kingdom. There might be times in your life where you're like, man, God, I don't know what to do. God's telling you to go to Africa or South, uh, South Asia or somewhere in the Middle East. And you're like, God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You need to be obedient to God and say yes to Jesus. Even if it might be uh, scary, you need to be courageous and make a a decision that you're going to be impactful for God's kingdom, that you're going to say yes to God's kingdom. You're going to allow God to use you for such a time as this. God wants to use you for such a time as this, but you have to be courageous. Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not command you? 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is making it very clear. You might be discouraged. You might be afraid. You might be uh, scared of what God, what, what uh, you, you have to do for God's kingdom. But God is saying, be strong, courageous. I am with you. That day that I had that Christian club event, God was with me and he showed up and showed off. You don't know what you might, you might have to fail, right? Failure happens. Our pastor, my pastor, he went through a lot of failures, right? He went through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, but he never gave up. Why? Because he was seeking God's kingdom. Right, you might go through trials and tribulation, you might go through failure, you might go through all these different things, but you have to stay encouraged. Why? Because you are seeking God's kingdom. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 through 8, it says, For this reason, I remind you to fan the fl fan into flame the gifts of God which is in you through the laying of hands for the spirit of God gives us, gives us, does not make us timid, but gives us a power, love, and self-discipline. And other translations says, does not give us a spirit of fear, right? God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. God doesn't give us, doesn't make us timid but gives us the power to go through these different things in life, to go through the trials and the tribulations of life, to make an impact for God's kingdom. He gives us the power. He gives us the love, and he gives us the discipline to continue to move forward. See, you're, you don't know what is going to happen, but God is with you. God is leading you. Is guiding you. So you're called to remain holy, to remain pure, to remain, remain righteous. And when God is calling you to be courageous. And God wants you to uh not to be afraid and not to be scared, but God, but God wants you to stand on him and seek his face and seek his glory. God also wants you to do is preach the gospel. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in Matthew, uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, Jesus is speaking to his disciples that he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you want to make an impact for God's kingdom, go and make disciples and preach the gospel. Jesus gives us this commandment, Christians. Bible college students, God gives us this commandment to go and preach the gospel and to see disciples made. Something that the church have, uh, many churches have ran away from, right? Not all churches, we believe that there's many, multiple churches that do, that does discipleship and really teach their uh, believers how to grow in their relationship with God. And we praise God for them. We thank God for all those churches. But there's a lot of churches that don't teach about discipleship, that don't teach how to be raised with Christ, how to continue to go after Christ, to seek his face and seek his glory. And so if you want to make an impact for God's kingdom, you need to disciple people. You need to take people who are around you and help them and pour into them and encourage them and go and and encourage them to go after God. Encourage them to seek God's kingdom. This year, in my own personal life, I got two awesome disciples. And they have been blessing my soul, blessing my heart. Being able to pour into them every week, hanging out with them, talking with them. And the reason why is because they're hungry for God. They're hungry for the things of God. But it's also also has encouraged me to go after God more because I want to continue to set the tone and set the example in the way I walk in my life if I'm going to be an example to them. If I'm going to 
continue to live my life, I want to continue to encourage them to go after God, continue to encourage them to seek God's face. And so it's also encouraging me to go after God so much more. Right. I want to be that example to somebody. Right. There are so many people when they're when people are watching you, they look at you as the example. They follow the things that you're doing. If you're living holy, people are going to people are going to look to you and be like, that's the way I should live my life. I need to be an example. I need to walk and talk and live like this man of God is because he is setting the example for so many others. Right, we 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 need to live our lives according to God and His commandments. Right, we need to preach the gospel. We need to be the um. Uh, we need to make disciples. And then, and so we talked about living holy, right? Being holy as our heavenly Father in heaven is holy. We talked about being courageous, to not be afraid and not to uh, be scared of anything, but to stand on the word of God and to make disciples and to encourage them to go out all out for Jesus, right? And also to preach the gospel, to see people get saved and see people who are broken and lost. The way that you're able to impact and influence people, uh, influence the kingdom of God, impact the kingdom of God is by preaching the gospel. You're called to preach the word of God. You're called to share Jesus with people. You're called to see people get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what you're called to do. You're called to do the things of God. Right? These are not, these are not, these are not, um, these are normal things. Of Christianity. These are the normal things. This is how you're supposed to live your life. This is the way that you're supposed to walk in your life. This is the way you're supposed to talk. This is the way you're supposed to live your life, right? You're called, you're supposed to go out loud for Jesus. You're supposed to live holy. You're supposed to preach the gospel. You're supposed to make disciples, right? This is what the early church did. This is what Paul did, my friends. This is what Peter did, my friends. This is where, what Jesus did, my friends. They preached the gospel. They made disciples. They lived holy life. They were strong and they were courageous. Paul went through so many different things, but he was still courageous. Right, the disciples died. Many of the disciples died for the gospel, died for the faith. Because they were strong and courageous, they knew that all these, they knew that they had to die for the gospel. They were strong and courageous. And the last thing I do want to highlight to you, you all today is the the way that we impact and influence the kingdom of God. Right, we impact God's kingdom is by seeking his face and seeking his glory. Matthew uh, 6.33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will, have been give, will be given to you as well. Jesus wants us to seek his face, right? God wants us to be in his word. God wants us to pray and to go after him and seek him and worship him and follow him and go and do all these great things for him. God wants us to read our Bibles. We should read our Bibles because we want to get closer to Jesus. We should read our Bibles because we want to get closer to God because we want to be more like him. We should pray because we want to hear God's voice because we want to get closer to God, my friends, because we want to be more like him. Because we want to talk like him. We want to walk like him. We want to live like him. My friends, this is what you're supposed to live. This is how you impact and impact the kingdom of God. It's by living for Jesus. It's by seeking his face and seeking his glory. It's by worshiping him in spirit and in truth. It's by preaching the gospel and seeing people who are broken, lost, sick, all come to know the love of Jesus Christ. It's by being strong and courageous 
even in the face of persecution or when God tells you to go to a different country or nation or God's telling you to go do something that, that you're not uh, uh, familiar with and you're um, being stretched and God's telling you to step out your comfort zone. This is what you're called to do. You're called to go to another level for Jesus. And so I pray that this word encourages you to go all out for God, to impact the kingdom of God in such a way that you see people who are broken, lost, get saved, that you see your community get saved, that you see your neighborhood get saved, that you see people who are who all around you, people who are atheists get saved because you are going all out for Jesus because you're fanning the flame of God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be encouraged to go all out for God, that you're saying, God, I'm seeking your face and seeking your glory. That God, I'm worshiping you in spirit and in truth. That God, it's all you and nothing else. That God, I'm going to live holy, live pure, and live righteous life for you. That God, I'm going to preach your word and preach the gospel and see people get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And see people, people who are broken lost come to know Jesus. I encourage you, I encourage you to go all out for him. It's worth it. It's worth it, my friends. It's worth going all out for Jesus. It's worth it living holy, right? It's worth it living righteous, right? Your old friends, they might tell you it's okay. Hey, man, you know, you should still go do this. You should still go do this. No, it's not worth it, my friends. Jesus is worth it, my friends. So I encourage you Bible college students to go all out for Jesus. Let me pray for you all. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for every single one uh, Bible college student who, who have heard my voice, every person who's hearing this message today. I pray you have your way in their hearts, have your way in their life. Bless them, lead them, and guide them. Pour out your spirit upon them. I pray that you encourage them to seek your face and seek your glory, and that they will be encouraged to uh, just to live for you, God. That they will live holy lives, Lord. That they will live righteous lives, Jesus. That they will make an impact for the kingdom of God in this nation and all around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.